Hi folks, I'm Ed Satarski and I'm going to tell you a bit about my bike jig. This is a view of the bike jig when it's fully assembled for traveling. It all fits together in a nice compact package. Those white things you see are gauges. We'll go into those in more detail. And you can see I put a handle on the top to make it a little easier to carry around. These are a close-up of the gauges after they've been removed from the jig. The one on the left is for measuring seats. A seat must be longer than the minimum dimension that's on the bottom of that jig and shorter or equal to the longest dimension on the top of the jig. Sometimes riders modify their seats, they're not supposed to, but sometimes they do and they make them too small and that would be illegal if the seat was too small. The gauge on the right is 120 degrees and that's for measuring morphological exemption if a tall rider's handlebars exceed more than 75 centimeters from the bottom bracket to 80 centimeters. That's what we would use to make sure that they weren't too stretched out, that, ga that gauge there. This is uh, a kind of wide shot of the same thing with the top piece of the jig removed. So you can see how those T-squares fit inside the jig for traveling. They've been trimmed a little, but they all fit together uh, pretty, uh, pretty easily. This also tells you, you can see that the length of the jig is 48 inches, because that's how long the T-squares are, and each piece is just standard 24 inches. You can also see the detail on the cutout on the top piece that allows for the bike pedal to fit in there and that uh, just gives you a bit more detail on that. This is a picture when the top piece has been attached to the bottom piece and it just attaches with three bolts and some wing nuts and you can see how it fits together. What's particularly important about this picture is notice that the top piece protrudes by five centimeters beyond the bottom piece. You have to make the top piece go in front of the bottom piece by five centimeters Otherwise, the whole geometry of the jig will not work. So this is very, very important that you, that you do that. This is a detail of the blocks that stabilize the T-square for the bottom bracket. Those blocks are just made out of three eighths inch plywood. And you'll see in a minute how it fits together. But these blocks prevent any wiggle of the T-square of the when it's in the jig so it doesn't go out of 90 degrees. And this is a close-up of the blocks on the front of the jig for the handlebars. Same idea, the blocks prevent any wiggle of the T-square of the out of 90 degrees and they make sure that the jig is accurate. So this is the jig fully assembled. You can see how those T-squares fit into those blocks and I'll show you some close-ups on that in a minute. So this is a close-up of the bottom bracket T-square. You can see that it fits very snugly in with its block, so there's no way that it can move out of its 90 degrees. It's, it's locked in there. And this also tells us the most important dimension on the jig is between the edge of that bottom bracket T-square and that handlebar T-square, that it has to be 75 centimeters apart. That's the only critical dimension we have on the whole jig. Everything else gets taken care of. So this is a close-up of the T-square that's used for the handlebars and how it locks into its block. So you can also see that there's no possibility for it to wiggle out of 90 degrees and become uh, inaccurate. It is locked in there. So this is a picture of a bike in the jig. The bike will easily stand up leaning on the jig. That's no problem. We also notice here, I'd like to point out that the jig stays very flat on the ground. So you don't have to lift the bike on and off some kind of box or something, which if you have to measure like 500 bikes at a time trial, it, it can be very tiring to lift bikes up and down. It also means that you know the bike isn't going to fall off if you lift it on top of something. So this way, you just roll the bikes on and off, and it's, it's no problem. It's, it's actually quite a bit quicker. So here I flipped the jig and bike around to give you a close-up of how you line up the bike in the jig. 
what you do is you line up the bottom bracket of the bike with that bottom bracket T-square with the edge of it and that's what I've done here you can see how that T-square sits right in the middle of the bottom bracket of the bike so this is how you put the bike this is how you align it you just do it by eye and you just put it in the jig so because the bottom edge of the jig has been aligned the T-square carries that dimension all the way up to the top so here we can see on the left edge of the T-square that's in the same that's that's where the bottom bracket is of the bike and the width of the T-square we can see and then we can see the seat in this picture just to the right of that now the T-square is 50 millimeters wide well it's actually 50.8 millimeters wide but let's not sweat the 0.8 millimeters for a moment what we see here is that this seat is a few millimeters behind the width of the T-square so because the T-square is five, five centimeters we know that this bike is set up legally if the tip of the saddle hit the metal part of the width of the T-square we would know that it was set up too far forward that it wasn't five centimeters behind and if the tip of the saddle was in front of the left edge of the T-square we would know that that's illegal because you can't put the tip of your saddle in front of the T-square so I hope that you will work with me about the 0.8 millimeters of the width of the T-square because two inches isn't exactly 50 millimeters but you can sort of see that since you're lining up the bottom bracket by eye and then you're checking the seat anyway what I usually do is if if the metal just brushes into the seat or if I can move it by and it compresses the, the leather a little or the padding then I'll, I'll give it a pass just because no jig is accurate within a millimeter anyway UCI only says that the jigs have to be accurate within a millimeter so I have measured some other jigs and found depending where you measure them have been out by two millimeters or, or maybe even more so you know we're going to look pretty closely to this and most of the violations that you see here are going to be pretty egregious I mean someone who knows how to set up their bike is going to set it up really closely you'll often see things before or you'll see things after and they're all legal so this is the bottom bracket this is the seat setback test and this is the handlebar test that if the pivot point of the handlebars is behind that right edge of the T-square then it's within 75 centimeters and it's legal if, it, if it's within the, the width of the T-square then it's between 75 and 80 and we would have to test for a morphological exemption for this rider using that 120 sort of hockey stick gauge and if it's in front of the T-square that is in this picture to the left of it then we know that it's too long entirely and that it they would be illegal so this is a picture of the jig fully assembled but the back side of it just so you get an idea that I of what it looks like and that I put some um, I put eight furniture slides on the bottom just to keep it out of the dirt and keep it from scratching up too much and this finally is a picture of another T-square that I use it's been chopped off a bit at the top and I use this for testing the morphological exemption if the seat is between 0 and 50 millimeters behind the bottom bracket so the way this works is you have a holder hold the rider you put one of the cranks at 90 degrees you put this T-square down and line up the edge of the T-square with the bot with a pedal spindle and then you follow that edge up to make sure that the rider's knee is behind it and if it isn't if it's in front of it then you know that that's an illegal position and the seat will have to go backwards remembering of course that riders can only get one exemption they can either only get their handlebars exemption if they're a tall rider or their seat exemption if they're short they can't claim for both so I hope that this 
overview has given you some ideas of how you might want to build your own jig. There's, just to remember, there's only one critical dimension in this entire jig, and that is that the bottom bracket T-square and the handlebar T-square have to be exactly 75 centimeters from each other. Everything else is taken care of by the materials and, uh, and, and the flatness of the plywood, etc. When I built this jig, the biggest problem I had, uh, the, the thing that took the most time was actually painting it. Uh, the actual cutting out and making the cutouts and everything else really didn't take that much time. So I hope this helps you build your own jig. Thank you.